When a child is born in Samoa, the placenta, which is known as fanua, is buried in the land. And it's a sign that that's where you live. The land is part of you because the land is the same word as placenta, which is fanua. And this is common throughout Polynesia. So that is a very symbolic way of basically having the baby in one with the land, so to speak. When we die, the bones of our parents or grandparents are buried on our family land. And that really ties together the birth and death of a Polynesian, of a Samoan. And that's the value of land to us. Land is where we are born into, and then we die on that piece of land. So being told that you can no longer stay on that land and not by your choice is one of the greatest injustices that I could ever contemplate at the moment. It's your cultural right, it is your birthright that you stay on your piece of land. And so if you're someone from Tuvalu, soon it will no longer be safe for you to stay on your island. And that's really robbing them of that cultural right. Pacific Island nations are made up of 14 sovereign nations and we also have territories. They're made up of volcanic islands, we have atoll islands and spread across the Pacific Ocean. Basically if you look at the map of the Pacific Ocean, those tiny little dots that you can barely see, that's the Pacific Islands. We have three sub-regions, which is uh, Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. We all have our own unique cultures in those sub-regions. So it's a beautiful part of the world. It's basically the picture-perfect location. It's a very diverse region to be from. The impacts of climate change faced by Pacific Islands vary depending on the type of island. For volcanic islands, the issues that we face, like in Samoa, we have frequency of cyclones, extreme weather events, extreme rainfalls, prolonged droughts. Those are the impacts that we face. For atoll nations, those impacts multiply in effect sea level rise, rainfall events, flooding, more severe storm surges, impact to our crops, which therefore impact the livelihoods of Pacific people. When a cyclone hits, it basically cripples infrastructure and economies overnight. The psychological effects of the climate crisis are far-reaching. For people who depend on land and sea for their livelihoods, that is is something you can't really capture. The fear of the future, the constant worrying about what's going to happen next, and that's a psychological effect that you don't really see when you talk about the physical effects, but it's something that is constantly at the front of mind for Pacific Islanders and for people of atoll nations who actually stand to lose their land. It's an, an existential threat. Pacific leaders do not necessarily show exhaustion, but there's definitely a fatigue from continuing to say the same thing year after year after year, and yet there's no change. Pacific leaders are not seeing any active change from the global community. The impacts on the Pacific continue to worsen year after year after year. So leaders should look to the Pacific as an example of the front line of the climate crisis. I've been reporting for 20 years on the Pacific and this is one of the most sensitive, heart-wrenching stories that I've ever been involved in. For me, I. I've always known that these impacts were there, that our communities were affected, but to actually see the tears of a grown man while speaking to me about all of the finer details of moving communities from their land was really eye-opening and was also like a reminder. Often we talk about the climate crisis, sometimes we forget that there are these impacts, that there are real people who actually will have to leave their islands because of the climate crisis, because of sea level rise.